Very good morning to all of you. You know, I, I selected this uh, topic, life skills in children, because I've given up on adults. I really don't think that we can change at this point of life. I'll tell you what I mean. Not a day passes when somebody comes and says, you know, I have this so-and-so, so-and-so, and this person is behaving in such an erratic manner. You know, I find that I am not able to get along with this type of people or this office or this family or whatever. Then there are also people who say that I perpetually feel guilty about what I have done. I feel I'm incapable. I feel that I'm not really being able to do much in life. I am feeling very upset, depressed. They make all these statements. When I tell them in very simple language that I agree, I understand, and this is part of life, and you can overcome it. You have to put in some time, effort, put in some energy, and you can change yourself, at least yourself, if you can't change others. At the same time, you can also change the way you react, respond, tolerate, or accept what other people are uh, doing. Believe me, nine out of 10 people hear that and then again say, yeah, but you know, unless that person changes, unless this happens, I don't know what to do. I hate my job, but I suppose I just have to continue. I don't think anything good will come out of it. And they give up. Why does this happen to so many of us adults who are educated, who are otherwise very capable, who have struggled our way up from our education system, become adults, are responsible citizens. We are money or we are homemakers, bonding the whole family and taking care of everybody from the eldest old people right down to the smallest child. On the one side, we are doing all this. On the other side, when I talk about these simple factors which are essential to life, people don't seem to respond. So what I do is I feel, okay, let us work with children. If we can't do anything about ourselves, or we don't want to, or we don't feel energized to do it, the least we can do is we owe it to the children that we must give them some inputs to lead a better quality of life, isn't it? Then comes a very important uh, question. How do we do it? and who does it? Obviously, when we are taking so much trouble, time, effort to send our children to school, send, of course, is a, a question mark which has come after the lockdown, whether we are sending them or whether we are making them sit in front of the uh, screen. But either way, what I'm saying is that almost all of us are putting our children through an education system which involves hours and hours and hours of their daily life, which involves so much of effort, assignments, homework, studies, exams. Through this process, how much of life skills is being taught? Unfortunately, pitifully low. So what do we do? We give up and we say, okay, I put my child in a good school. Child is getting basic education. Child will grow up. Child will give competitive exams, child will get into a professional course, child will come out with uh, good results, get a good job and move on. But the history is going to repeat itself if we don't do anything about it. 
we will be bringing up another generation like us who are just able to handle what we call as the routine the defined roles the programmed decisions then it comes to something which is not part of the curriculum as they say it's been drilled into us no don't you remember teachers whenever you ask some so called uh, silly question the teacher said no that's not in the portion don't ask stupid questions who is there to tell these teachers that there is no such thing as a silly question there are only silly answers and yet that is what we have all been through so today i just wanted to give you a few very basic very simple inputs into how we can supplement this education system and how we can ensure that despite the fact that children have to go through this very rigorous studies and academics and all that they still come out as good capable peaceful satisfied and happy young adults now to help us in that more than 30 years back world health organization put out the basic 10 life skills it is still not part of the curriculum doesn't matter are we conscious of it are we doing anything if you are an adult who in some way or the other is concerned with even one child i'm not saying you have to be a teacher or counselor or whatever you know people dealing with children i'm just saying that even if you have under your guidance or under your influence even one child it could be a neighbor's child it could be a nephew or niece it could be just about anybody are you not concerned about it are you not willing to contribute towards this gap which is there in the learning of the uh, child if you say yes then let's talk today about what needs to be done the first one uh, in this uh, list of 10 life skills which uh, who propounded is self awareness okay now here is a nice little chart which uh, sunita has brought down to all of you if you can see here you have interpersonal skills self awareness coping with stress critical thinking creative thinking problem solving managing emotions decision making effective communication these are the step by let's look at it in a very light hearted manner you know one thing you make you know learning a joyful process and learning takes place automatically children are automatically interested so what sunita did was she pulled down some very simple but very meaningful cartoons about children so let's take the uh, first one that is about self uh, uh, awareness tennis the real firebrand little kid that is entering school teacher has asked how is your family and the kid is saying the family is fine thanks now that i am back in school he is aware of the fact that because of his being at home family is not necessarily fine because of the tantrums and because of the naughty things that he does but he is aware of it i think that's a great achievement for a 6 year old at 60 years sometimes we have not learned this basic uh, uh, vidya says uh, sent email last week for a single parent book i did not receive your uh, mail vidya you have to send it to ali khwaja 50 at gmail.com so i repeat again those who uh, last week i had told you about this uh, handbook for single parent because i understand and acknowledge the fact that if you are a single parent bringing up even one child or more than one child it is not just a double task because your partner is not there with you it is a quadruple task acknowledging that i have made a small little handbook for single parents in indian condition there are very good books available but most of them are western and our culture is different from that so from indian uh, culture and indian value systems and indian family uh, styles i made this handbook i don't sell it i give it free to people who are genuinely interested in it and all they have to do is for the soft copy 
send an email to this uh, email ID, which is now appearing in front of your screen. That is alikwaja50 at gmail.com. So far, whichever mails I have been receiving on and off, I have always been replying uh, to that. Now look at this uh, uh, simple thing that uh, we uh, saw on self-awareness. Are you aware of what you are doing? Make the child aware of what he or she is doing. A simple thing like you are angry, you are feeling disappointed, you are feeling let down. Teach the child to become more and more aware of himself and herself. Otherwise, you know what happens? The child keeps putting the blame on others. That Rahul took away my ball, you know, he is a, such a bad boy. That uh, Sumita is not talking to me, I'm trying to talk to her. All you need to do is to turn the focus back on the child and say, how do you feel when Rahul took away your ball? How do you feel because Sunita is not talking to uh, you? Simple things, but you have to do it on a regular basis. That is how it works. Then let us move on to the other side of it, that is empathy. One is being self-aware. The other is being aware of other people. Do I understand what other people are thinking? What is going on in their mind? And the very basic thing, understanding the why of the what. What did Rahu, what did Sunita do? She refused to talk to uh, me. So, can we stop for a moment and think why Rahul did what he did or why Sunita did not do what I expected her to do, that is to make friends with uh, uh, me. So here is a good cartoon on empathy. <laughs> Little Dennis again. He has been making life so miserable for his mother that mother every now and then has to punish him. And you know his punishment. He is made to sit in the corner facing the wall. But you look at her expression, look at her stresses. Despite the fact that he has been naughty and he is being punished for it, Dennis turns around and tells his mother, it looks like you could use a little time out too, mom. That is what empathy is all about. Being able to understand what is going on in the mind of the other person. So when a child thinks or is taught how to understand why Rahul took away the ball? Why mommy shouted at uh, me? Why daddy is not willing to give me extra money for buying a pizza? Why Sunita is not making friends with me though I want to make friends with her? That is a simple skill called empathy. We have to teach this to our uh, uh, children. If we don't do this self-awareness and self-understanding uh, I mean, others, inevitably what uh, um, happens is that we lose out on managing our emotions. We allow our emotions to go astray. This child you know, goes on crying, I want to come the ball, or gets very angry, I'll go and beat up that uh, fellow. I don't want to play, I don't want to go to school from tomorrow. You see how his emotions are going haywire? And don't forget that it is all, every time, it is the emotions that control all your actions. When you find a child throwing tantrums, it is not the tantrum that you have to police and uh, restrict and uh, you know deal with. It is the emotion behind the tantrum. The more we can teach children how to manage their emotions, the easier it becomes for them to manage their actions and for you to interact with them and to deal with them and not get uh, flustered. So have a look at another cartoon from Peanuts this time, Charlie Brown. He's my favorite. Charlie Brown is sitting very upset. And his friend Linus comes and says, this thing we call failure, it is not the falling down. It is the staying down. When we fall down, what happens? 
we have a choice to stay down or to pick ourselves up. If we let our emotions override us, if we go into depression, if we lose our basic self-esteem and self-worth, if we start saying, I'm not good enough, there's no point in getting up and walking again, I will never succeed. If such thoughts and emotions keep coming in the mind of the child, the child will never progress. So we have to teach the child management of emotions. I know you're angry with uh, Rahul. I know you're very disappointed that uh, Sunita is not talking to you. Now that you have identified this emotion, how will you deal with it? Dealing with anger? Will you go and hit him? It doesn't help. Will you scream and say bad words to him? It doesn't uh, help. Will you go and take out your anger on your little brother? It doesn't help. So is there any better way, a constructive way of managing your emotions? Yes, there is. Come on, let's explore. That's all management of emotions is all about. And the more you manage your stress, the easier it is to handle. I mean, the more you manage your emotion, the easier it is to handle your stresses. Stress is an essential part of life. Even small children today are getting stressed out. In fact, there was a very interesting, uh, you know, little uh, research done by the American Psychological Association. They wanted to know what, what is the, where is the source of stress for children? Why is it that we talk so much about children getting stressed out nowadays? So they wanted to know, you know, where children are not stressed, where they are happy, where they feel contented. So they gave a questionnaire to hundreds and thousands of children. And one of the questions was, are you less stressed in school or are you less stressed at home? Make a guess. What do you think the children said? Vast majority of the children said, we are less stressed in the school bus. The time between home and school and the time between school and home is a time when we are least stressed. What does that tell us? Responsible adults, parents, teachers, whatever role we are playing in life. What does it tell us? And very significantly, for the last couple of years, we have deprived the child of even that little, you know, space, that little gap between home and school and school and home because there's no school bus how much we are taking away opportunities for children to learn life skills. It's not fair. Children in this pandemic and in the lockdown and all have not only you know, reduced their learning of life skills, they have actually regressed. Day in and day out as a counseling center, we are dealing with families and children where we are being able to identify children who are today not in the same level of managing their emotions of life skills as they were exactly two years back when the lockdown first came. Isn't that an alarming situation? Don't we need to do something about it? Their motivation for studies has gone down. Their ability or interest in writing has gone down. Their ability to face classmates and teachers has gone down. It is a long time in the life of a child. Don't forget that. If you are 40 years old and for two years you are locked down, you were locked down for 5% of your lifespan. But if a child is eight years old and he was locked down for the last two years, that is 25% of his lifespan. And the children who are two or three years old, they were barely born and they came into this life. It was as though somebody grabbed them and put them back in mommy's tummy. The first two, three years of their life, which most experts have said is the critical time for children to develop themselves. 
to grow, to nurture, to become somebody, their brain formation, their ability to deal with all sorts of situations in life, we have deprived them of it. Let's move on to, you know, something like, let's say, decision making. Do we teach our children how to take decisions? Do you find that if you take your child to a restaurant and he start looking at the menu and says, yeah, I think I will have uh, masala dosa. No, 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 wait, I think I'll have rava dosa. Uh, no, what is that uncle having on the next uh, table? That is onion dosa. Then I think I will have that uh, onion dosa. Are you aware that this child is not able to take a simple decision about what to order in a restaurant? If there are five shirts which are washed and ironed and kept, will the child be able to take the right decision? Today, I want to wear this particular uh, shirt. For this reason, the mind should work. The reasoning should be uh, uh, there. Vidya is asking how to teach emotional control, etc. That's what I'm telling you. Teach the children how to manage their emotions. I gave you two examples just now. Keep expanding on it. Every time that the child is able to identify a particular uh, emotion, even if he doesn't, you help the child and then say how are you going to deal with it. The child says, I want pizza today. You know that pizza is not good for him. He's been having too much of pizza. You say, no, I'm making good, fresh, homemade food. I'm not going to give you pizza today. Then turn to the child and ask, how are you feeling? If you can teach the child and empower the child to openly tell the parent, I am feeling angry with you. I'm feeling disappointed. I am feeling rejected. I'm feeling unloved. You don't love me because you're not giving me pizza. Perfectly okay. That's an emotion. Now, how are you going to deal with the emotion with the question? Brainstorm. Look at various ways and means. And that moves on to decision making. How do you take a decision? Okay. Now that you know that today you're not going to get pizza, that is confirmed. What are you going to do for yourself? Do you think that it will help if you eat the regular home food and then maybe eat a chocolate or an ice cream? Will that help? Shall we plan out that next Sunday? You can order pizza. So from right now, you start feel, feeling nice that, okay, Sunday, I'm going to get a pizza. These are the simple types of uh, uh, things. So here you have Dennis back again on decision making. Okay. His neighbor, Mr. Wilson, he keeps on getting harassed with uh, Dennis. Dennis is perpetually in his house and he doesn't want him and he keeps throwing him out and Dennis keeps coming back. Now he has thrown him out. He was very angry with him. Within minutes, Dennis is back. And he's saying, I'm back, Mr. Wilson. I decided to forgive you for being grouchy earlier. What a decision he has taken. I am forgiving you for being grouchy with me. And I'm back to harass you all over again. Okay, here it is naughtiness and he is troubling his neighbor. But what I'm saying is that this is what we mean when we are talking about some basic life skills. And when we talk about decision making, for example, one of the times, uh, you know, when uh, uh, decision making becomes difficult is when you need to solve problems. If you're accosted with a problem and you're getting confused how to deal with the uh, uh, problem, you have to learn one more of the 10 life skills, which is called problem solving. How do you uh, do that? Back to Professor Dennis. He will teach us how to do problem solving. Here is his friend Margaret who really wants to befriend him, poor thing. She even wants to grow up and marry him. She's already made up her mind. And Dennis doesn't like her at all. So what Dennis does is he looks for ways and means how he can overcome this problem of Margaret hanging around. So he becomes a magician and he's telling his little friend Joey, I can make Margaret disappear as a magician. Now how to do that? He pulls out that little baby snake from his hat. And the moment Margaret sees that 
snake, she runs. She says, see, I told you I could make Margaret disappear. Now, instead of succumbing, crying, getting upset, Dennis is learning how to do problem solving. In order to be able to take the right decisions, in order to solve problems and all that, we have to use our thinking, right? We have to keep building up our thinking cognitive abilities. Now our cognitive abilities go in two different directions. Though it is debatable, behavioral scientists tell us that we have a left brain and right brain. The left brain is the logical one. The one that does critical, analytical, sequential, mathematical thinking. The right brain is the one which does emotional, interpersonal, creative, intuitive thinking. The more you can encourage a child to build both sides of the brain, believe me, whatever changes come in future, the child will be able to handle it. Let's take, for example, creativity. Creativity is nothing to do with art and this, and that's a very minor part of the uh, Creative thinking is in to be able to think outside the box. A child who takes a block with two written on it and takes another block with two written on it and says, two and two can also be 22. See here, I'm putting both the twos together and it becomes 22. That is what we talk about as creative uh, thinking. Why is it being done this way? Why not that way? Looking beyond, looking outside, that is what uh, creativity is all about. So this time we will go back to Calvin. Calvin has this, uh, you know, stuffed toy, a tiger who comes alive when he's alone with him and he becomes his friend and they spend time together. Calvin is a single child getting bored as usual as so many children do today. So he has created his own friend and he makes that friend in his imagination come to life. Now, he is playing in the sandbox and he's telling Hobbes, his tiger friend, you can't just turn on creativity like a faucet. You have to be in the right mood. And Hobbes, the tiger, is asking him, what mood is that? And he says, last minute panic. Even that is creativity. Look at the flip side of it, critical uh, um, uh, thinking. Here, Dennis will show us how critical thinking is uh, done. How come we ask for daily bread? You know, the, in the Christian prayer, they say, Oh Lord, give us our daily bread. So here he is sitting in the church and saying, How come we ask for daily bread? Then we could be asking for daily donuts. That's critical thinking for you. Why stick only to daily bread? I would rather stick to daily cakes or donuts or daily ice cream or whatever. He is critically evaluating and looking at options. Like that, you know, this thing goes on and on. Just a couple more I will uh, uh, show you so that we complete the whole uh, this thing. You know, for example, uh, uh, good communication, very important. Absolutely important and critical, very, very essential aspect of uh, uh, life skills. Dennis's mother is asking, what did you say? And Dennis is turning and asking her, what did you hear? That's how you build communication. What about uh, no, stress management? Here she is. Picking up in the outfield, baseball. She says, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, and it falls down. And instead of getting stressed out, she says, everybody is wrong sometime or the other. Then what is left over uh, uh, now is interpersonal skills, which I consider to be the bottom line of life skills. That's why I kept it to the last. If you can build good relationships with others, significant others, then you know that you can do anything. Like my guru of management taught me, if you can learn how to get work done by others, 
then you don't have to do any work. And here is Dennis giving you a wonderful example of it. Know what, mom? I think they should change Mother's Day to Mother's Week. Simple, touching. And see how mommy is feeling so touched about it. Very small, simple ways in which you can build interpersonal relationship. Please keep that as the bottom line. And you are aware now that after talking so much, I deserve to have that one minute break. And I will be back in a minute. In the meanwhile, here is Seema to give you some nice, useful inputs. Good morning, everyone. What wonderful, simple tips. All this is actually, I mean, hats off to Ali. He makes psychology look like a, you know, he gets it down to a very practical application level. These are 10 life skills which he spoke of right now, which WHO has recommended. And, you know, a lot of times we are wondering as parents, how do we apply? How do we, you know, what is the right way of parenting? And as a significant adult, as an educationist, as all of that, how do we, what is the right way of bringing up children? How do we inculcate these 10 life skills? So if we, if we have these wonderful tips and many more tips, just imagine, you know, uh, if we are aware, usually how do we learn parenting? Probably, you know, the way our parents brought us up and how our children learn is through, again, role modeling. They look at us and learn things and life skills. So are we really, you know, good role models? Are we ourselves following all these 10 life skills, you know? So if you want to know deeper, if you want to actually understand life skills, how to implement it, how to apply it in your day-to-day -day life, that's the reason we have this CCAD program, the Certificate in Child and Adolescent Development. It's a wonderful program, four months, online program with mentors and everything. A lot of uh, discussions with the mentoring group, each and every aspect, right? What is a good, let's say, a parenting, a parenting style? Or what is the different, uh, you know, multiple intelligences in children and many such uh, things, right? So we will actually take you through the entire developmental life cycle from zero to 18 years. And these kind of practical tips, these kind of reflective activities within the mentoring group. So if you're keen, just get in touch with us. We just got started with the program and uh, admissions are on for some more time. And uh, we're going to close admissions very uh, soon. So if you really want such wonderful tips on how to implement all these life skills, if you want to actually, uh, you know, sit down in smaller groups, discuss amongst each other, you know, simple things like uh, how much discipline is important and how much freedom should I give my child? Those things, if you actually sit down and have a good reflective, uh, uh, you know, brainstorming session with a mentor who's also a counselor, who's worked a lot with children, just imagine, you know, you'll get so many wonderful ideas as this as a significant adult. And these are the children who are going to be wonderful, responsible citizens. Right. So this is a wonderful CCAD program has been a, a you know, very uh, a well received program. And if you are interested, just get in touch with us. And yes, next Saturday, we are closing our DCS 22. We have a valedictory and we are really looking forward to officially close the program. There's a lot of excitement. Students are now coming every day. We're having a lot of series of common classes. So yes, a lot of action here. And uh, like I've uh, informed earlier, the next DCS 23 admissions are on. So that is to learn, to professionally learn to how to become a counselor. That's a one year part time program. And if you're outside Bangalore, we have a program called IPCG. International Program of Counseling and Guidance. So many things happening, many uh, activities happening. Check out our website and uh, get in touch with us if you want to know anything more. Bye, take care. The next Saturday. Seema has said bye, but I'm not going to say bye because this. To me, is the more interesting part of this session because I get to learn a lot uh, from you. I have seen a lot in the uh, chat box, but most of them are 
nice comments. Most of them are some good mornings and highs and all that. Yeah. Roshan says, after doing this, he has learned to respond and not react, thereby able to solve most of the issues smoothly without arguing or without any conflict. This is what we mean by life skills. Roshan is a wonderful grown-up child, I would say, who is still learning. At 70 years of age, she decided to come all the way to Bangalore to go through the DCS program, spend a year with us, taking an accommodation nearby. This is what life skills is all about. On the other hand, I come across other senior citizens who say, I'm retired, I don't know what to do, I'm too old for anything. Such simple aspects, even for you or your child to be able to deal with the later years of your life, you need to build life skills uh, now. This is what we are all, you know, interested in. And this is what we have been going on, expanding, doing our little bit to help you to be able to deal with things. Okay, Swati said that uh, children said they are less stressed uh, or more stressed at home. No, that's what I said that, you know, they are less stressed in the school bus. Or rather the time when children are given, this is a very essential part of life skills or of growth and development of the children that we should teach them autonomy. I was mentioning how easily a child takes a decision about what to order in a restaurant or which shirt to pick up out of the five shirts which are all washed and ironed and kept ready for uh, him. The more we encourage the child to take decisions rather than taking decisions for the child. And that is where I lament the education system which says, no, this is in the portion, you have to study only this and come out with only that answer. We have to break from that. Let it be in the curriculums and in the portions and in the school, let them follow whatever it is till, you know, somebody becomes wise enough to understand that life is a little more than MCQs. There are always no longer, you know, one out of five correct answers to the real issues of life. We'll wait for them to do. But right now, as Ifat is asking, how to apply the theoretical knowledge and understanding in a practical situation most effectively. To start with, since the topic today is concerning children, stop thinking that you are, are the great learned one who can teach everything to the children. For a moment, at a practical level, as Ifat has asked, reverse it. Tell yourself, okay, today is a Saturday or this is the weekend. I have some free time. I'm going to interact with this particular child. If it's a child at home, a neighbor, a friend, a cousin, whatever it is. I'm going to interact with this child and I'm going to learn from this child. What does the child do in this aspect? What does the child do when he gets angry? What does the child do when you know, Rahul takes away the ball? What does the child do when Sunita refuses to talk to him? Do brainstorming at a practical level. There are no final answers to it. Understand that the more you keep interacting, learning, exploring with a child, the more the child builds the uh, thing. And this theoretical knowledge automatically gets converted into practical uh, uh, learning. Surekha is asking, how do we motivate a teenager of 15 years to get out of her mobile phone comfort zone? If I say something, then people get upset. The first thing is, are you in your mobile phone comfort zone as a responsible adult? Can you please start off with reducing your mobile phone time and make it a conscious effort? Instead of telling this 15 year old, I want you to reduce your screen time Tell the 15 year old that I am going to make an effort to reduce my screen time. I think there's a wonderful world outside the laptop screen or the mobile screen. And I am going to now look more so because two years we have been deprived of the outdoors. 
please make up for it. Summer has come. It's beautiful and open outside. There are no rains, there are no chills, there are no restrictions. Just get out into nature and see what you can. Tell the child, this is what I want to do. The more you can be a good role model to the child, that is one important thing. Similarly, the second thing that I would like to answer to Surekha's question is, instead of stopping the child from spending time on the mobile, offer alternatives to the child. Instead of saying, don't spend so much time on the mobile, ask the child, would you like to spend some time playing board games? Would you be interested in you know, putting up a few potted plants so that we can nurture some plants and get some flowers in our balcony? Give the child alternatives. And whenever the child shows interest in any activity which is beyond the screen, Please give a lot of encouragement and a lot of positive strokes. It takes some amount of patience and, you know, you have to wait a little bit. You have to be consistent in it. But I assure you, 15 years, a child is still moldable. You can still do wonders with that uh, child. Okay, Alice is asking, if every child learn life skill, I feel they will never need a counselor. Can I extend that, Alice? They will never need a teacher. They will never need a parent. What a utopia, no? Children will be able to become autonomous, as I said, independent. They will take responsibility for their own lives at a younger and younger age. Which is what animals do. Other than human beings, all other species teach. As Sunda has put up the definition of autonomy. All species teach autonomy, which is the ability of a person to act on their own free will. We don't, we are the only species, human beings, which keep on drilling it into the uh, child. Vidya is asking, how does life skills help the child to potty train? Hope it's not a silly question. Not at all, Vidya. It's a very, very relevant uh, uh, question. Even a small child, one year old, two year old, three year old, a simple thing like potty training, a simple thing like eating. Haven't you come across so many children who the mother is perpetually running behind to feed the child? Every now and then the mother thrusts one spoon into the child's mouth and the child uh, then says, no, I don't want more. And the child keeps moving out and the mother keeps going uh, behind. And we use the wrong methods. We start showing some cartoons on the uh, you know, screen and say, watch that, and then thrust some food into their uh, mind. Same thing with potty training. Make the child understand how important it is. When the child has dirtied himself, help the child understand it is that smell is bad, no? You're feeling a little icky, icky, no? So if we do this, then I can wash you and you will look so nice. See, I'll put this powder or I'll put this little perfume and see how nice it uh, feels. You'll also feel so nice. Always, as I said, be positive. Show the good aspects of it rather than just disciplining and not just particularly any of these you know, essential aspects of bringing up a child. Work more on the positive aspects than on the negative uh, aspects. Here again, Sunita has put up a nice quote. What happens, uh, uh, you know, to change themselves, to help if it is needed, this will make them feel capable of being able to change their own clothes and start their confidence level improves. It's not just the question of party training. All these things are so interconnected with each other. The child feels, you know, a higher level of self-esteem and self-confidence. That is why we have to constantly work on this. Roshan says it would be wonderful if children can learn life skills at a young age as they would become very mature adults and be self-reliant. They can help the society instead of asking what to do next. They are there, Roshan. They are willing to. We think that children are immature. We think that children are irresponsible. You give them responsibility and then see how responsible they uh, become. It is not as difficult as we think. Ha, Krishna says, as a parent, I am confused signals on what kids like to do and not do. Kids shut off if we ask them to change, making new friends, reading books, doing
do we leave them to do what they like or how to get them to change? This is something I have been constantly harping on. You have given the parents' perspective. Let me give you the child's perspective. Innumerable children, I'm not necessarily telling this to Mr. Krishnan, it could be any parent. Innumerable children say that my parents do not listen to me. They ask questions, but they don't want to answer. They've already made up their mind. If a child has that impression, the child will not talk. Learn to be totally what we call as non-judgmental, except whatever it is. You spoke about uh, reading. If you tell a child, would you like to read some books so I can get you some interesting books? And supposing the child says, ah, stupid, I don't want to read the uh, books, I only want to watch TV. Do not react. Do not be negative. Do not put the child down. Ask the child why. What is the advantage of watching TV which is not there in reading books? Then explain the advantage of reading books. There is no substitute for role modeling. Read books in the presence of the child. Maybe even get a book to the dining table. Mark out one passage of one page which you have read recently and read it out. You know what? I've been reading this uh, book since the last three days. And one excellent thing that I found in this was, and you open it to that page and you read out that one paragraph, close the book and put it away. No sermonizing, no pushing. But what have you done? You made the child realize that there is something joyful, something interesting, something of benefit to me to read uh, books. Sometimes you encourage the child in the similar way. Anything interesting that you find, no, come and tell me. Uh, uh, yeah. Gayatri's question is how to teach self-awareness to small children. I started off by saying, no, that whenever a child comes and expresses anything, as, as long as the child has learned basic communication, whenever the child is trying to convey something uh, to you, Turn it back to the child and create an element of self-awareness. Tell the child, what are you doing about this, this, this? Today is Sunday, you are not allowed to go out. Because of the lockdown, you are not being allowed to go out and play. What do you feel about it? That's where self-awareness starts. You have been asked to eat these vegetables. You are not very interested in eating them. You feel that they are not very tasty. What do you think you are feeling? Emotions. Go on teaching the child about his own emotions and then others' emotions. That's how you start with small children. Usha says, how do I tell my five-year-old son not to be too naughty? Especially when me and my hubby take him out on our official outings. <laughs> ha! Official outing. The child knows that you have to be at your best. Because you are a responsible professional. People are looking up to you and you have to behave in a particular manner. So what does the child uh, do? He starts doing stupid things. He'll start making some noises. He'll start throwing things. He'll start running here and there. That is what we call as attention-seeking behavior. You are busy professionals. You are going on your official trip. You are spending maximum time doing whatever your commitments and responsibilities are. You are ignoring me. So if I become naughty, you will leave everything and run behind me just to set me right, isn't it? Child learned. Now you have to unlearn that. Carrot and stick. Whenever the child is good, explain first that this is an official trip. We have to do this. There will be these people with whom we have to interact. First, you explain all that. Nothing goes into the child's mind. When the child is actually experiencing that after going to that uh, uh, place, you are the, you know, not giving attention to the uh, uh, child. Carrot. 
if you keep quiet for the next one hour, by the time I finish this work with this uncle, we will go out to the park. We will go and sit in that toy train. We will go and have some nice ice cream to eat. We will sit at home and play some games. And similarly, the stick. That is, if you do not behave properly, I have to do this work for the next one hour. If you do not behave properly, then I'm not going to do this, this, this for uh, you. Back to Dennis again. <laughs> he has gone into this antique shop and he broke some antiques, which are very valuable. But what he's saying is, good thing I only broke some old stuff instead of something new, isn't it, mom? He doesn't know what is antiques. He doesn't know the value that those old things are much more valuable than new uh, ones. Here's another one, very embarrassing for the uh, father. Father has been sitting and gossiping before the guest came. That, you know, it is the lady who wears the pants in that family. What was he trying to convey that? The husband is intact and the wife takes all the decisions. He's saying that, that uh, Dennis's dad has said it to Dennis's mom without realizing that Dennis is overhearing and he's picking up. And the moment these guests come, and the lady has come wearing a skirt. In all his innocence, Dennis is saying, you were wrong, dad. You said she wears the pants in that family. Now you imagine how embarrassing it is. This is what I mean by saying that be good role models. Be aware of what you talk in front of children. Make them talk. Don't wait till the guests come. Make them talk about how do you feel about it. Today we are having these guests. This is their background. This is. The you know, the uh, uncle, aunt, child, they will be coming. How would you like to go about it? What do you think we should uh, uh, do? If it says if a child is more energetic and active in comparison to other children in a group, how to deal with them efficiently? I would congratulate that child to be more energetic and active. I am happier with children who are hyperactive than with children who are too depressed and pulled down. Children are not meant to be cowed down, getting bored, sitting in one corner, being too disciplined. It's not good. They will not be able to face. We are talking about life skills, no? They will not be able to learn life skills and deal with the word. So as long as the child is not doing anything wrong, why do you compare and say in comparison to other children in a group, this child wants to be energetic and active. As long as he or she is not being destructive, as long as the child is not hurting anybody uh, else, allow the child to be energetic and active. The more energetic, the more active the child uh, is, the better he is learning life skills. The better he will be able to handle different situations in life. The better he will be able to take up challenges and stress in his adult uh, uh, life. But as I said, discipline is important. You just draw the line and say, when you are doing this, 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 which hurts somebody or which infringes on the rights of somebody, I am going to punish you or I am going to stop you with that. that. Ah, Dennis is saying he is like a permanent gym mem mem member. It's like a permanent gym membership with expensive dues. <laughs> How Dennis, the very, very energetic and active child, is providing for his mother a permanent gym membership. She doesn't have to go to gym. All the time she's running behind him, picking him up, pulling him. She's getting all the exercise, perhaps a lot of yoga and everything, only because of the behavior pattern of uh, Dennis, right? Yeah. Vidya says, is it okay to force a three-year-old boy to sit on the party seat or to leave him without forcing till the time he actually gets comfortable? I've partially already answered that question. Uh, uh, but they are no forcing, no ma making it look as though it's some horrifying trauma or something. He will keep on resisting. Forced compliance is never good, even for a three-year uh, uh, old. So as I mentioned earlier, I repeat again, tell him the positive aspects. Encourage him. Reward him when he sits on the potty and does not dirty himself uh, outside. Slow, simple, patience. But over a period of time, it works. And it has a permanent effect, which goes beyond the party training as we were talking. Similarly, Ifat is asking also, 
If a child is slower than the other children, how to adjust him in the group? Find out the reasons. We can't generalize why the child is slow. It could be because physically he is weak, he is smaller, or he is not able to you know, run or do things which the others are doing. It could be because he has had some health issues or something like that. It could be because he is not connecting with the other children. He has a language problem or he has an assertiveness problem. So when you find that the child is slower, not adjusting in a, a group, this is all part of the interpersonal relationships, which as I told you is the bottom line of the whole gamut of uh, life skills uh, uh, training. So you have to go into the reasons. Why is this child uh, slow? The moment you find the reasons, 50% of your task is over. You can start working on how to overcome the uh, things. Okay. Roshan says, uh, uh, would love my grandchildren to learn life skills, but they are abroad. Is it possible for them to do life skills uh, um, uh, course? Yes, during the lockdown, we were doing life skills training for children online, which could have been attended by children abroad. But as you know, we believe more and more in the human touch. So after the lockdown has been lifted, we are as far as possible encouraging more of uh, you know, uh, hands on. Right now, we have a life skills program going on here for children. You'll be amazed if you just peep into that hall and see. You will see a child who almost looks like an adult. And sitting next to him will be another child who looks one fourth of his size. How do these get along together? How do they form part of one group? Their intellectual capacity and age and everything is so different. Yet, you can see how well and harmoniously they inter, uh, you know, interact with each other. And that is something, again, I feel is missing in school. There should be time when a bigger child and smaller children should be put together so that they learn from each other. This is our contribution in whatever small way we can do it. 10, 20 children, we can't take more than that. We've got our program going on. We're planning another one in May. But online, it becomes a little more uh, difficult. Okay. If it says that the child is slower in studies compared to um, uh, other people in the group, this we see left, right, and center. Let us accept that every child is not the same. You take children of a particular age. Are they all of the same height? No. One is very tall, one is medium, one is shorter. Accept it. Same thing happens in studies. The only thing that I give a lot of importance to from the angle of life skills is does the child feel motivated to study? I think that is a very important aspect of life skills. Making the child feel motivated that I am studying not just to give write down in the exam and get my marks, but because I want to become a capable person. I want to hold my head up. I want to be looked up by other people. I want to be somebody who is very happy, satisfied, and contented with life. I want to have life in my control. That is what a good education gives uh, me. If you can motivate the child to do that, believe me, unless he has a learning difficulty or he's intellectually challenged, that's a different thing. Otherwise, he will move on in life. Okay. So now, since we are coming to the end of the program, I will answer Vidya's last question. If our parents upset or provoke us, then how to control our emotions and anger in front of the child? And also, what's the correct age in a child to tell about what happened between his parents because of which they are not together? Second part I will answer first, there is no minimum age. Even if the child doesn't understand your language, the child understands your tone, your mannerism, your body language. So even a tiny child, if he has seen mother and father fighting or mother and grandmother uh, fighting, once it is over, you take the child, cuddle him or her, be soft and nice and say, yeah, I got into a fight. Sometimes you also fight with your children, uh, friends, no? Like that, mommy also had a fight. It's okay, but we still love each other. We like each other. After the fight is over, we'll still get back and we are still friends. This is how you need to inculcate these basic uh, things. And then 
move on to the first part of your uh, question that is that how to control our emotions and anger in front of them the more you speak it out the easier it uh, becomes so in front of them when you are showing your irritability stop for a moment and ask is daddy looking very irritable am i looking ah, something like that you know why because i had a uh, uh, fight with granddad no that's why i'm feeling like this hey you are my friend come on you make me laugh at joke come on let's be nice to each other what do you think we should do how are we going to enjoy ourselves that's all that is needed it's not at all difficult keep practicing that keep putting it into you now that we have come to some more there may be more time available you have to spend with the uh, practice and we continue last week because of ugadi we did not have our saturday session that was the only exception now we are there and, and next next uh, saturday on 16 we are going to have a very very serious topic but very you know useful topic i would say improving the reading habit and both in kids as well as adults so thank you very much and over to sunita